Hello, welcome back. So in our last video, we saw that the first strategy that the Tasty Taco owner uh, estimated did not work out when he looked at the worst case scenario. And this is essentially the very important part of uh, financial analysis, financial planning. The performer financial statement gives you, it's like a uh, simulation. It gives you an idea of what your business may look like under different scenarios. And it gives you a chance to revise your strategy to accommodate for maybe even the worst case scenario. Because a very important part of a successful business is the ability to survive uh, no matter what. So here we have um, the owner come back and they he decided to make three different revisions. Again, I refer you to the textbook to read the details assumption behind it. Um, you, you probably would not grasp the entire picture by watching the videos. The videos will walk you step by step to go to finish the assignment. But if you feel confused and you don't know and you don't know how to apply this in your own case, you need to read the textbook so you know in context these were the assumptions, these were the changes that were made, and that's why and how they were translated into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so it's very important that you are able to do that and ultimately be able to create your own financial model. Okay, so here are three changes that the owner decided to make. First is to reduce the number of hours. And the second is he decided to take less money for himself. And then finally, most importantly, is instead of leasing, um, the owner decided to buy used equipment. Um, that will be cheaper. However, to buy used equipment, uh, he doesn't have enough cash on hand to do that, so he'll end up taking out a uh, an equipment loan. Uh, an equipment loan is very similar to a car loan, or, um, and they are typically uh, amortized loans. So we're going to implement all those changes uh, in this model. The first thing we're going to do is to look at uh, the uh, fixed assets, the new equipment. So this is on table uh, X17. So here he had a detailed list of equipment, um, how much it costs per unit, how many units he'll have. So we need to extend the unit cost to total cost. To do that, we just take the unit cost times the number of units, and that will give us the uh, total expenditure for kitchen equipment. And we just add up the total for this. And the depreciation term for kitchen equipment is five years. So the depreciation per year will be the total divided by five. Uh, dining room is the same thing. We take the um, unit cost times the number of units and Then we add up the total. The uh, furniture is also also have a five year term, so the per year depreciation turns out to be twenty one hundred and forty dollars. Anytime you see that it's not properly formatted, I suggest again suggest you to format it so that it will be. Um, and if you format one cell, here is a very handy thing. It's called a format painter. You select that, and you can paint your format on other cells, so you don't have to redo them. A format painter will include all formatting, which includes color as well as underlined and so forth. And here are our organization costs. This one actually did not change from the base case. Um, is very similar. Uh, and the same thing for current assets. So we need to add up to the office equipment. <laughs> and here are our uh, total startup costs. So this this time it will be different. You you because you are purchasing your own equipment, it will be different from before. So your total stop cost is actually higher. Uh, and your total depreciation will also be higher. And that is to be expected because now you're owning your own equipment. The owner doesn't have enough cash to 
fund the entire startup cost, and therefore he decided that he will take out a loan. Again, all this information is in the uh, textbook. Next, let's take a look at that loan. That's located in table 18. The owner is going to take out a $60,000 loan, and it has seven years term with monthly payment. The interest rate is actually listed in the assumption page, so we're going to pick that up here. So, interest rate is assumed to be 6% in the base case, and that's per year compounded monthly. The first thing we have to do is compute the monthly payment. Here we can use the PMT, or payment function in Excel. The first argument is interest rate. So that's six percent, but is per month basis. So we have to divide that by twelve. And n per is number of period. So that's seven years. Again, we need to multiply that by twelve because there will be a total of uh, eighty-four months. And the present value is the loan amount. If you include that. Your initial, it will come up as a negative number, and that is the same inflow outflow assumption. And we can do that by putting a negative sign in front, and that gives you the um, in a positive number. So the same negative inflow outflow assumption as a financial calculator. So the annual total payment is the monthly payment times 12. In addition to that, we need to figure out what the interest expense is for the year uh, and the principal payment for the year. Uh, you can use uh, the Excel function to do that, but uh, I want to also demonstrate how you can create an amortization table, and that will make it more clear where this number comes from. So let's go get started. There, uh, this is an amortization table. The ending balance is the loan amount. So that will be the $60,000. The interest portion is the ending balance times the interest rate. Uh, this is monthly, so we need to divide that by 12. The interest rate remains the fixed. This is a fixed amortized loan. So we will make the interest rate an absolute reference. We divide that by 12. And the principal portion is the total monthly payment. Again, that remains fixed because this is, a, this is an amortized loan. We will make that absolute minus the interest portion. That's your principal portion. The next year's remaining balance, the new ending balance, is the previous ending balance minus the principal portion. And here is our loan amortization table. Um, you create one row and you can copy it to um, the entire table. So this is uh, for the entire seven years. To check that you get this correct, your loan should be fully amortized at the end. So you do have a balance of zero at the end of the loan. So you, And you can also quickly check that the, in, the interest portion decrease over time and the principal portion increase over time. All those are characteristics of an amortized loan. Now we can sum up the interest expense for the first year. So the interest expense for the first year is just the first 12 months. And the principal portion is also the principal portion for the first 12 months. Okay, you can double check that together. Your annual um, loan payment is the same. So of course it is the same. Now uh, you need to do the same thing for year two and year three. So I'm gonna, and uh, year two will be from month 13 through month 24. And I will uh, let you go ahead and finish that. Did you get the same amount? Again, it's very easy to check. Your total amount should be the same each year. And the interest expense portion should go down over time. And the principal portion should go up over time. So here are your interest expense in year one, two, and three. And your principal portion, uh, your principal payment in year one, two, and three. It's important to separate, distinguish the interest expense from the principal expense, from the principal repayment. Because interest expense is tax deductible and it goes into the income statement. The principal repayment does not, is not tax deductible, and it, it reduces the uh, outstanding loan in the balance sheet. 
Now we are ready to update the performance former statements. Um, we do, I, uh, include, I included the formulas that you should have computed, completed in the last video. Um, but here we are looking at strategy two. I, uh, I only, you, so you only need to put in formulas that are new under the, 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 the new strategy. One of the things that you notice is uh, for wages and owner salary, even though the new assumption is different, uh, all you have to do is change it in the assumption area. It does not affect the structure of the model. So when you put in the new hours and when you put in the new um, annual salary for the owner, that get up, up, updated automatically. Uh, depreciation and amortization, however, that is changed because we have a, uh, a new depreciation schedule. And that is in table X.17. So here are our depreciation. And it's the same each year. Next, we're going to look at interest expense. Again, we computed that in table 18. 18. So we can just pick that up there for year one, two, and three. For the rest of the uh, statements, the pro forma statement of owner's equity, nothing really changed in here, uh, except now we have a positive net income in year one under our new strategy. Um, and most of this remains the same, except when we go into borrowing and repayment. Uh, under the term loan, we are repaying principal on the loan, so we need to include that. Once again, we have computed that in table A18, so we can just pull that over here. So it's important to separate interest from principal repayment because they go to two separate places. As we scroll down to the next statement, uh, this is the balance sheet. And um, current asset, there was no difference. But long-term asset is very different. So we need to pick that up. Uh, total kitchen equipment, again, that is in table 817. So total equipment is $45,450. Total fixture and furniture is $10,700. Total office equipment. This one actually didn't change. This is the same. Total office equipment is $4,500. This whole improvement is $50,000. And organizational cost is probably the largest amount is, is $125,280. So we have updated our fixed assets. Finally, we also have to update our liability. Uh, our bank loan now, the initial bank loan, bank loan again, that is from um, table 18, which started with $60,000. And the subsequent balance is equal to the original balance plus any new borrowing. That will be here minus any repayment and we'll copy it over to years two and three and we'll see if our balance sheet still balances and it does so that is um, an example of how you are modifying a business strategy and in this case it does require you to model to modify part of your model but not significantly as you can see if the changes only involve the assumption like these two items you do not have to change your model at all but if the assumption goes from a um, uh, from a uh, interest only loan to a term loan where it is an amortized loan that will affect your um, model and you have to include that so in the original model we assume interest is a term loan in where you pay interest on the outstanding balance and you don't pay off the principal until the end of the loan in here they end up getting an amortized loan where each payment include both principal and interest and the affected um, the model
So we have now updated the model and we can do uh, the sensitivity analysis uh, for this as well. Let's take a look at what uh, variables we want to include in our analysis. Uh, we probably want to include the same uh, uh, revenue and sales growth. Uh, we also would be interested in number of hours um, and also employee benefits, which are some of the larger expense items. Um, and as well as um, advertising, utility, insurance, supply, uh, accounting, and technology. In addition to that, uh, last time we included the um, increase in wages uh, as well as increase in um, other expenses. Now that we know we're going to take our loan, we may also want to include interest on debt as a variable because um, we are not sure what interest rate we will be able to obtain our loan at. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, we're going to start with the base case. By now, it should be uh, sec uh, you, you all of you should be used to using data um, option and then what if analysis and scenario manager. We're going to add a case. We're going to call this the base case. And our changing cell, again, we want to always include, make sure that you are active in the changing cell. And you want to include the title of the case. Uh, we want the revenue, number of hours, um, as well as employee benefit and all the way down to here and this time we're going to add interest expense uh, as well as um, increases for the next two years the additional scenarios for the second strategy is located in the tab s2 scenario so this is just the uh, S2 stands for the second strategy. We have the best case and the worst case. And I will leave for you to uh, copy that into uh, add those two scenario. All right. Now let's see if you have um, you, you should if you have not added the scenario, you should pause the video and go back and add them. Now let's see if we get them correct. Again, this is the same as what we've done before. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and go ahead and complete that. When you come back, I'll show you the answer. Just a tip, remember you want to include the case that you're working with in the title. Is this what you have? If you, ha if you get it correct, congratulations. If you didn't get this uh, answer, um, you can go back to the last video where we talk about uh, in this first strategy and where we, I went over step by step how to put these formulas into, into this area. Again, with each video, I want you to do more and more work on your own with the ultimate, ultimate goal that you will be creating your own model from scratch very soon when you do the case analysis. Now we can use the information that we have created. We can look at the scenario and let's take a look at the best case. So show. And of course, everything is fantastic in the best case scenario. Let's take a look at the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario, things are still not very good. But we can um, uh, remember in the last chapter, um, we talk about um, at least in the worst case scenario, that give them a chance to become successful. If it turns out that sales is significantly less than what they originally planned, then they may have to further revise their strategy um, after um, towards the end of year one. So here, at least they have um, they they will have enough money to last. Um, 10 to 11 months into the year before they run out of money. So again, looking at the ending cash balance at the end of year one, they will run out of money if the worst case scenario happen, but at least uh, but it's, uh, that, that will not happen until towards the end of year one. Similar to, to what we have um, created before, you can also create a scenario summary. Uh, so I'll do that really quick. So for the scenario summary, you want to include the numbers. And in here, 
Excel will generate this for you. Again, you want to go in and put in the label and format this nicely so you know what each of these number uh, represent. Here is a, um, so again, you want to add labels, you want to add subtitles, uh, you can insert rows and columns to make things uh, nice. This concludes the uh, performer financial statements analysis uh, for chapter eight. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next chapter.